we've been doing three weeks of kind of the same strategy and uh, having three different solutions to uh, that problem. <clears throat> so have a look at those if you want. Uh, we're starting a new strategy today and the title for that strategy is catalog of attributes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to read for you guys once again. So these are always uh, built up by a problem and a solution. And this week's problem is this: creative musicians find inspiration in other music. While we seek to make music that is uniquely our own, every other piece of music we hear is automatically processed and becomes an unconscious part of our musical vocabulary. Uh, taking too much is theft or plagiarism. Taking too little fails to acknowledge our influences. So that is kind of the problem, right? Which we're always facing. I'm always making uh, film music that's very similar to my heroes and what I've been listening to. So I'm more on. Uh, I'm more of a tonal composer than I maybe would like sometimes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is the problem. And <clears throat> this is <coughs> the solution that we're going to have a look at. Listen carefully and many times to the piece that inspires you, which would be the source, right? Study it element by element and layer by layer until you can write down a catalog of its attributes. Once the catalog feels complete, set aside the original source, instead referring only to the catalog as a template for your own new work, which would be the target. Um, and then it says, it goes on to talk about um, things to listen for. Uh, so you can listen for sound, harmony, melody, rhythm, and form. And then write something concrete about what you hear for each attribute. <clears throat> if you're comfortable with notation, feel free to use it in your catalog, but sparingly. The goal is to capture only the framework or scaffolding of the source, including the aspects that make it inspiring, but without simply recreating it. You should end up with a description, not a transcription. Okay, and then uh, so one example could look like this is in the piece is in uh, 122 BPM. The sound elements is drums. This is for electronic music producers. So 808, four on the floor, lots of filter motion on closed hats, bass line FM ish in, in parentheses, electric piano distorted but dry, female vocals, breathy verses, full voice choruses. Lead synth, big, super sore, but only after the second chorus. Then, so that was only the sound elements, and he goes on listing up uh, <clears throat> one track that he's listening to. Okay, and um, finally he says, this catalog of attributes could describe an endless number of new works. In fact, you can probably hear music that fits these attributes in your head already, it is complete enough to serve as a template, but not so descriptive as to allow for a recreation of any particular piece of existing music. If two musicians read the catalogue, there would be almost no possibility that they would use it to write the same thing. Now try to put yourself in the mindset of one of those musicians. Using only the catalogue as a recipe makes something new. Yes, and then I go on. And on and on. And uh, <clears throat> I was thinking of maybe commenting on uh, on uh, the uh, time lapse of this uh, while while it's running in the background because it's otherwise this can be a really really boring video. <laughs> so I haven't tried this out before. Uh, there's not too much point in me having a headset, but I'm I'm looking pretty similar to uh, uh, how I looked in the. <laughs> <laughs> in the the minutes before this but um uh what i'm what i have been doing in the background is uh doing what i've been reading so i've been um 
uh, listening to a track that I got permission to to do so from, and I'm going to link the original track in the description below. It's by a, uh, a gentleman called uh, uh, Trugwe. Uh, and he creates uh, amazing music, so I'm really happy that I was able to uh, listen to some of his stuff and get inspired. And what I did was I made uh, one, two, three, four different market tracks. Uh, one, one for sound, one for rhythm, one for form, and one for harmony. And then I listened through uh, the piece, writing down what I was thinking. So it was just like a notebook, but a, a notebook that is also has the the different time spots um, embedded into it. And it, and it's it's um, nice to be able to kind of look at and make a plan based on those uh, uh, mark markers. And I made an idea, as I always do. I often start on the piano, and uh, we ended up. Now we're I think we're we're trying trying to uh, uh, make like a brassy. I love the eighties brassy prophet kind of sound side. So I uh, found a preset that was maybe 80% there and then we're tweaking, 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 doing lots of stuff and I'm not that proficient on the uh, synth stuff yet so that usually takes a little time for me but I, I like to I like to challenge myself uh, and try to get closer to what I'm hearing in my head and uh, I believe we did. Uh, I think I was pretty happy with this preset, uh, if I remember correctly. I think I'm I'm renaming this preset with uh, my abbreviation. So <clears throat> that means I, I was pretty happy with it at the time, at least. Um, so far, we haven't heard anything of what we're doing, but I, I've made it like a an A part and a B part. And like and right now, I'm just recording some chords. And I'm doing this a lot, so I'm, I'm not actually in record but I'm using the retrospective record so I'm just uh, jamming along and if I'm happy with what I do then I do a retrospective record which is going to keep uh, what I played um, unless I do something else so every time I press play over again then <clears throat> it, it, it is gone forever and uh, this is a good example of me uh, trying to find some atmos uh, because I, I, that was something I heard in the original track, so I wanted to try to to create something from um, something that was not musical and try to do some sound design. So I found this talking drum sample, uh, inserted it into the project from the Media Bay, and uh, I love doing this. <clears throat> so taking, just mangling a sound and trying to cut out bits and pieces kind of makes some sense um, and we'll see what we what we do here uh, often I <clears throat> listen to like the top end or the bottom end and try to think of ways that I could change the sound and so you can see uh, one thing that I do use a lot is the little altar boy uh, I'm getting some problems with uh, the um, <clears throat> performance, so I turned off the buffer size a little bit. Uh, but working with the pitch and formants in uh, a little altar boy is a great way of uh, making a sound become something else. And so I have now duplicated that track into a couple of different tracks just while working. And I, I believe this turns into like somewhat of a kick drum, this part of the sample. And uh, from one of the other parts we're going to make like a hi-hat thingy uh yeah and so that makes up the intro and I, I love using some sounds that will kind of be be like an earworm something that is going to catch you and and make you listen to the to to the piece listen longer at least so this is some kind of weird kick drum. Um, maybe, I guess I, I was kind of cheating, starting from something that was uh, at least percussive and, and turning it into uh, more of a drum, drum soundy thingy. 
But this uh, is another example of how I kind of take away the top end and the middle end. So we're just left with uh, something in the middle. And here I am um, um, adding it to a sampler track in Logic, which enables me to play it and pitch it up and down and do some simple stuff. Uh, so I'm adjusting the starting point trying to get it to loop and just testing it out getting to know um, the sample track better um, in the sample track you can also do the audio warp function uh, which which is cool check it out yeah so this is me actually recording some notes and then rendering those to get them as audio and then uh, reversing it and I just reversed them and now I'm, I'm combining the original and the reversed signal to kind of make like a swooshy uh, beginning <coughs> for, the, for the samples using the uh, off offline audio thingy uh, to do some um, EQ and again more EQ more EQ trying to while I work creatively, kind of think of some good rules to stand by. So um, trying to uh, maintain control over the low end <clears throat> is a good thing to do, and it doesn't take long. So this is the some of the hi-hat stuffy that I uh, used. And then delays. Delays, delays, delays uh, will make something that sounds okay sound a little better. So yeah, delays. I probably spent a little bit too long on this. This Fission, Eventide's Fission is a plugin uh, that does a lot of strange stuff, sound designery stuff. Here I'm adding uh, some delays. Again, more delays, but it's more like uh, of like a, uh, an effect delay. So you can do all sorts of stuff with that plugin and I need to learn it better than I already have, but there you go. New sound, Diva. I'm loving the Yuhe sounds. <clears throat> Let's listen. So I kind of wanted to just give a little sneak peek of what we we're working on. Um, and that was me just using uh, a pad, flush out some chords. Uh, this time around, I think we started with just a melody, which is pretty unusual for me. I'm, I'm, I usually start more often with the chords, not uh, with the melody, no with the chords, with the chords uh, rather than starting from a melody. So this was a little different and it's it's kind of exciting uh i here i actually saved that preset so that i have it for later uh, that's also something that i've started doing and i want to be even more strict about uh saving a lot of stuff um so that i don't have to go into another project and pick up the preset and and then lose a lot of time on that but rather than that build like a bank of stuff um this is more drums i wanted a low kick i often do this just taking a <clears throat> uh listening through some kicks some kick samples and then uh choosing a sample that has a nice low end, uh, like a full nice low end, and then just cut the uh, the highs off of it. Uh, I think this was pretty. It was uh, it's not too long after I bought the Yuhei <laughs> um, plugins, so I really wanted to try out the new stuff. So this is uh, the, their spring reverb and there's a color copy is their uh, chorus C kind of a thing. And uh, yeah, some claps, 
clubs and hi -hat, the hi hats was uh, from the sample we did earlier. And so I'm kind of sprinkling in a little bit of that throughout the piece, trying that out. I've been doing this a lot, uh, like the Ableton way of, of repeating stuff. It's it's so nice, uh, especially if you're in uh, grid mode, so that uh, which I very often am. So. Uh, that's very, very nice. Just hit the two on the keyboard and then uh, select the bars you want to repeat and then control D for duplicating that. Uh, heading on over to the uh, Zebra uh, and into the uh, unfinished presets that I also bought at the same time. <clears throat> I had a little buying spree at the um, uh, Black Friday last year and some still haven't sat down and fully uh, investigated what I'd bought but now uh, there's a lot of really 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 nice sounds for uh, media music in, in those um, unfinished uh, presets so the unfinished greatly recommended and we have uh, my markers are happy part and sad part so that's interesting um, so yeah, I can, I can, I can relate to that, uh, knowing how we're going to end up. <clears throat> That's pretty, pretty, uh, descriptive. This is me again, trying to create something of my own, uh, and starting from just a sine wave and, uh, another sine wave basically is there's not too much difference and working with the envelope to kind of get that opening and a, a more percussive sound from it, if I remember correctly. And doing all sorts of, you know, adding stuff, making it sound a little better as best as I can. So, so I, I'm much more familiar with this page, uh, coming from like a audio engineer background. This is uh, feels a lot more home than <laughs> working with oscillators and LFOs. But I'm I'm trying I'm 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 getting there, <clears throat> so um, yes, <laughs> I, I I can't really remember what sound this is, but um, just trying different stuff out and and uh, my thought behind it is uh, if I do it more I'll get better. <laughs> if I force myself to try to get stuff to work, uh, and and uh, I've. I have like a funny way of thinking about these things so I'm trying to make make it harder on myself when trying to learn a new thing because I believe I'll, I'll learn faster I'll, I'll learn more efficiently if I don't fall back on stuff I already know uh, so I'm, I'm trying my best to to use what's in the synth itself uh, and not just slap on 10 plugins, which I know very well, uh, to, to mold it into the sound that I want, but rather uh, see how far I can get from the synth alone. And, and um, that's taking longer, and so that's why I'm, I'm spending so much time in this session uh, doing synthy stuff. So I haven't renamed this, uh, shame on me. Maybe a little later, <clears throat> but it looks like it's it's some kind of melody, uh, which is nice, and and I feel kind of felt the need to readjust some settings, so we did. Uh, yes, adding delays, adding uh, reverbs, always, always great. Um, so what are we doing here? So I would I really uh, encourage you guys to test this out uh, if you're stuck, if you, if you don't know what to write. Uh, find some track that inspires you. Uh, get it into your DAW some way and then just create a lot of markers in different categories. Make some notes. Uh, you could do this in your notepad as well if you, if you so desire. Uh, that would be also work out nice. So... Um, it might not be uh, the best piece you've made, but if you look at it like working out or just training, uh, you could get some nice sounds out of it or uh, get to learn a new plugin. And that is, uh, that should have great value <laughs> because now you'll be able to use it in upcoming projects when you have that idea 
Uh, and I try to think that way, and it's not always easy, but uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm sure this technique will, will uh, uh, be fun for you guys. So uh, we're getting ready to listen to what we came up with. Uh, let's have a listen. what we ended up with um it's not my best piece <laughs> but i love the way of thinking and i want to do it more and i've done it before with a more like a media film music focused track in the beginning which is also a lot of fun uh, especially if it's not uh in tempo that is a very very nice way to 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 work and so i kind of see what what comes of it uh, so, so creating some rules for yourself is so exciting and I, I love uh, I'd love to hear uh, if you guys try this out and if you have any uh, have any fun please do let me know I would, I'd love to hear your experiences with doing this kind of stuff so that's all from this video with a uh, new format and I'm going to try this out uh, so if you if you love it please tell me compared to the older ones if you hate it, please tell me that as well. And so I, I want to try to figure out a way to maximize uh, the content that I'm able to produce uh, with the time that I have, which is a very little, especially now in the corona, corona time uh, with two small kids running around. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.